She was a pop sensation like no other. Her music inspired the country and defined a generation. But her fall from the spotlight was as quick as it was painful. An unspeakable addiction would lead to a near-fatal car crash and the loss of her fortune. In an effort to revive her career, she would return to the studio and produce perhaps the worst record of anyone's career ever. She would drop out of society and move to India, devoting all of her time to charity in hopes of finding her inner spirit, only to find herself thrust back into the spotlight with a record-breaking comeback special that would secure her place in music history. Who the hell is Melissa Lefty? And Behind the Muse continues. Welcome to Behind the Muse, the untold stories that never happened to the people you haven't heard of yet. Melissa Peggy Sue William House Gregory Lefton was born to a simple life in rural Indiana. But the beautiful surroundings would not impress the young girl. Even as a small child, she knew she was destined for something better than animal husbandry. Growing up in rural Indiana doesn't do much for one's self-confidence. Everybody pretty much figured I was going to grow up to milk cows. You know, that was it for me. But I proved them wrong. I knew that even though everyone around me was a piece of shit, I wasn't. By the tender age of seven, she would demonstrate a lust for the spotlight that would plague her for the rest of her life. I am only a cool night. I am beautiful sister. <coughs> By the time Alyssa was in high school, the bug to be a star had molted into scabies, and she quickly hooked in with a local band in hopes of attracting some attention. I decided that if I got a band together in high school, if I got a band together and we could just like rock the whole community like with our, with our awesome, just rebellious tunes, that um, we'd be pretty set. Oh, yeah. We formed this band called Piss. Everybody had like a different way of looking at things, and so I, I was just kind of like, look, you guys, can't we just work something out between all five of us? Like, can't we just have a song that we all agree on? What are you doing? Spit out! Oh, come on. Hey, Melissa, Melissa! Fuck this! I am through with you! My career is not going to go down the toilet because of you! Hey, come on back! Unfulfilled by the punk scene in Indiana, Melissa embarked on a journey that would lead down an alley, that would take her to a road, that would show her the path, that would enter a highway, that would lead to a tunnel, that would cost her six bucks. Anyway, I got to New York. Eventually, I started to get these gigs, like, at, at the coffee house. <laughs> I was singing, like, I was really hurting at the time, so I was singing stuff about, like, guys who left me, and I was just, like, in pain, and I was strumming away, and... <laughs> and that was, like, pretty cool, but, like, I don't know, I got really tired of um, making 20 bucks a night, like, just trying to make ends meet. Even though the raw passion in Melissa's music was not met with great enthusiasm in the pretentious coffee houses of New York, Melissa's hunger for success only grew stronger. She decided to take matters into her own hands and literally break into the music business. Can we do some more fixing? Got nice office here. At some point, I was like, this is really hard, I'm really tired, and I'm gonna, like, it's gotta be easy to get a record deal. Like, People do it all the time. I'm just gonna fucking go for it. I snuck into the record company, which is like totally crazy, I know, but it worked. Like, no one knew who I was. And I seduced, like, the president of the company. I was like, doesn't this feel good in your groin area? Like, I was like doing like a dance around him. So he's like, well, I'm gonna have to give you a record deal. This is my hit song. Jive Records immediately signed Melissa to a huge record deal, and the young star and her credit limit were rocketing skyward. With a hit song and a sold-out world tour, Melissa Lefton, the small-time girl from Indiana, seemed like she finally achieved her dream.
seen that living the life of a pop star was taking its toll on Melissa's mind. So now I'm touring. Woo! I'm touring, and it's like, I'm going to do TRL next week. Woo! <laughs> like, At first, it seemed that Melissa was just a little because, nervous, like, common with such sudden fame. Sad. To all my friends back in rural Indiana, fuck you, because I'm totally making it. I tend to think I'm really great. I'm gonna be like bigger than Oreos. Not, like I have some friends in like the background that where they they need me. So, you guys done? Cause like this is really cool and everything, but I need to go. <laughs> little would anyone know, including Melissa that this would be her first and only television interview for 10 years. Hey, Melissa. In this exclusive amateur video taken just hours before the biggest show of her career, in the basement of New York's world-famous Madison Square Garden, Melissa's dance with death would soon be exposed. <gasps> what are you doing? What are you doing? No! Put that down! What are you doing? Ugh. Oh my... Uh, Holy uh, sh... What are you doing? Uh, oh my god! Uh, we have a... Sh Holy uh, sh... Uh, oh my god! Uh, hey, Sandy! We don't need to go any shows. We have a huge... I can't believe this! Hey, doing? guys! Guys! She's all fucked up! Oh! Melissa's performance was canceled that evening, and her whereabouts were unknown for several days. Rumors started flying that she was kidnapped by drug dealers and forced to make knockoffs of Gucci handbags. But unfortunately for Melissa, the truth was much worse. The moment I shot myself up was empty. Was the moment I, I departed, and I said to myself. This is the way that I want to feel for the rest of my life. So, uh... <sighs> As her Sunny D addiction grew, so did her desperation for money. She called upon the only person she thought she could trust. Her friend and longtime manager, Shlomo Paisanowitz. But he would deliver a devastating blow that would push Melissa further over the edge. But he says to me, you're screwed. You get nothing now. I'm the manager and I get all the money. You're just a shit face. You're just a sunny D whore. With the money gone and no hope in sight, Melissa, desperate to feed her addiction, took to the streets. I make love to sweaty bums. Just to score a of sunny D. It didn't feel good on my vagina. Melissa makes one last desperate call to her psychic. But when her credit card was declined, she was once again left with nothing. I hang up that phone, and I get into my Honda Civic, and I speed down the raceway, because I gotta score, because I gotta ease the pain. Suddenly, it's mayhem. I've got shards of glass in my face, twisting metal everywhere. And I can't find my knees. The police report on Melissa's near fatal crash listed the cause of the accident as an obvious plot point in a documentary film about a pop star. Although the initial lab reports couldn't determine what Sunny D was made of, the drug was considered non narcotic and perfectly legal. Luckily, she was confined to a body cast for six months, forcing her to kick that monkey on her back. Thank you, God, I said. And to this day, my relationship with God is tremendous. <laughs> <laughs>